In this segment, we're going to take a look at using the combine mode. And there's a toolbar from combine mode, and I have mine shown here at the bottom of my workspace, combine mode. And so we'll take a look at using the different functions of combine mode. Um, you have an on off button just to turn combine mode on or off. And you have the ability to add embroidery hoops, delete or remove embroidery hoops. Um, the software can calculate the number of hoops for you. And then you can rotate your hoops. And we can also learn about using a splitting guide to help um, when you have objects that are too big for your embroidery hoops. Now, in this case, I have a very nice layout that was created in the previous segment using the layout tools. And so I've defined a work area that's 500 millimeters round, and it's much larger than my largest hoop. This is my 200 millimeter square hoop for the MC11000. And you can see clearly that obviously all this embroidery does not fit within one hoop. And so this is an example of when you would need to use combine mode. Now, with combine mode, you have to first of all turn it on. And when I turn on combine mode, you'll notice that all of my other tools become gray. I can no longer create embroidery or edit the embroidery while in combine mode. So combine mode is turned on. You can simply work on combining the designs. When, com when you want to be done with combine mode, you push the button again, and it turns combine mode off, and it brings you back to your regular um, tools and features. So I'll go ahead and turn it on again. And now I, it shows me the shape of my 200 millimeter square hoop right here. And what I need to do, first of all, is add a second hoop. So if I click on Add Hoop, it adds the blue hoop. And you can see now I have two hoops. I have the green hoop, and I have the blue hoop. Now one of the things that you have to do here is you have to take this hoop and you have to move it until it covers a portion of your embroidery design. And you get to decide which embroidery designs are going to go in your hoops. So for example, if I put the hoop right there, I can see that everything that's turned green is covered by my hoop and everything that's still black is not yet covered by an embroidery hoop. So then I'll take the second hooping and I'll place it over here. And now I'll create another hooping, so I just click Add Hoop, and I can move that one down around. So basically, we're just going to travel around this circle, and we're going to create hoopings to cover all of the embroidery designs. So we'll need to have probably two or three more embroidery hoops to finish off all of them, to covering all of the embroidery designs. Okay, so I'm going to need one more. Combine. And now all of the embroidery designs are covered by at least one hooping. And so to be able to stitch this um, tablecloth that I was imagining laying out, we're going to need to hoop one, two, three, four, five, six times. Now, one of the things I can talk about, first of all, I'm going to turn combined mode off. When I turn combined mode off, you'll notice a very different change. I no longer have a hoop in the middle of my embroidery area. And what I do have is these dotted lines that represent where I've placed all of the hoops. And now I'm back in designing mode and I could go in and make edits to the designs or add to the designs if I wanted to. But in my case, I feel like I'm done and I've finished my layout and I want to try and stitch it. And one of the things I'll show you is if I go to my print preview right now, it's going to show me each of the designs. Now, what I've got here, uh, I'm just going to go to the options. And I'm going to make sure that, first of all, my cloth setter marking is turned on. Because if you have a Janome cloth setter, it's a really great time to use it. Because this is going to help you to ensure that all of your hoopings um, fit together. Now, for the moment, this is not necessarily what you need to do. But I'm just going to switch it from actual size to fit to page. And I'm going to have it do um, just the embroidery elements and not include the embroidery information or this other stuff. I'm just going to simply have it show the stitches and, and I'm going to fit it to page. Um, actually, that doesn't make sense. I want to put it, I want to have the hoop shown as well. So I'm just going to have the stitches and the hoops shown and say OK, just so that you can see what it looks like. So that gives me kind of a single page overview of the project. Hoop number one, two, three, four, five, six. Six hoopings to go around this shape. Okay, 
Now, we're going to go back to the options because what you would really need to do is print these at actual size. And I don't necessarily have to have the hoop shown, but what I really need to have shown is the cloth setter marking. And so if I say OK now, you'll see what you get. See, here's page number one. And notice this little, if I just zoom in here, there's a small little crosshair here. Now, if I go to the next page, you'll see that that one has all crosshair on both sides. And if I go to the next page again, crosshair on this side. So that tells me that I would need to print, I guess, six pieces of paper. Next page. Yeah, six pieces of paper to do to put this whole project together. So I would print out all six pieces of paper and I would use this little marking to help line up all of those six pieces of paper. And then here you can see this is the cloth setter guide that you can use with your embroidery machine to help line up the embroidery hooping so they all line up absolutely perfectly. So that's using your cloth setter and the print preview to you know com complement the combined mode. Now I'm just gonna I'm not gonna bother to print this obviously I'm just gonna close this off and I'm gonna show you another thing here because if you remember when I was doing the combined mode um, there were certain parts of the designs for example right here if I zoom in over this design this design has part this little flower of this design is inside of the green hoop and inside of the blue hoop and what can happen is sometimes parts of designs end up in the hoopings that you don't want them to be and pretty much the easiest way that we can show that is if I was to say file save as and I have a folder that I've made just for this training DVD just for this purpose and I'm gonna choose Jeff like I was gonna stitch this design out so what happens if I try and save flower 8 Jeff and hit save now the combined mode goes to this new um, it shows you it's going to give us a preview of all of the hoopings and so well it just takes a moment okay so here we have and it shows us our hooping sequence and what I can see here is on the right this is the first hooping and notice here that it I can see that little pink flower that's from this other hooping that comes later on has been included in the first hooping and that's what I was trying to avoid I'd rather have this flower be sewn as part of this design in the blue hooping and so before I go ahead and save this no I guess I'll just allow you to browse through before I, I quit doing this so there's the first hooping and this is the next one now what the um, small information at the bottom says objects to be sewn in the selected hoop will be shown in actual stitch colors objects to be sewn after the selected hoop will be shown in light gray objects already sewn before the selected hoop are shown in dark gray so while I'm looking at this hoop here I can see that those are the objects that are stitched in color in other words that's what's inside of this hoop everything that's light gray will come later everything that's dark gray would have sewn before this hooping okay so now I'm just gonna simply close this we're not gonna save this you could we could save the selected design now or we could save all of the designs now but what I want to do instead is I want to close this and I'm just going to make a small edit before we go on. So what I found is that using group and ungroup can help to ensure which objects go in which hoop. So for example, maybe I'll just turn my visualizer off and I'm going to show here that I can drag a box to select these three flowers, specifically those three flowers, and I'm going to use edit and group and then I'll drag a box to select these three flowers one two three and group the hotkey is control G so I'll just hit control G and you can tell now because if I try and select those flowers it's all one cluster or one group same thing there so I'm gonna group all of the flowers together in the design and by grouping them I'm basically telling the software try and keep these together if at all possible if they all fall within the same hoop keep them together now the software will break them apart control G for for group the software will break them apart if it needs to because they don't fit within one hoop but if they're all with one hoop within one hooping this technique works very well so I'm just gonna continue on with this so control G to group and one more time 
I need to select the last three flowers and control G. So you can see that I've got them all selected and grouped together just by the way I can click on one part of the flower and the whole group selects. Great, so now let's try doing the same thing again. File, Save As, and choose Jeff, Format, and I'm going to say Save. And it goes through that same process of creating that um, little hooping guide that's going to show us what's going to be in all of our embroidery hoops. And so now it's when it's done, it brings you up to that sort of hooping sequence window. And now I can see that in the very first hooping, I've got these three flowers, but not that little flower tip that was previously involved there. So you can see that grouping was able to correct that issue that I had. And I could go ahead and check all of my hoopings to be sure that uh, I'm happy with what gets included in each hooping. And it all looks correct. And so then I could simply say save all now and that would save all six of these Jeff files into my folder and I would therefore be ready to go to the machine and start sewing these out. So that's using combine mode to create a multi-hoop layout. Now I'm going to um, continue on with looking at the combine mode but this time I want to look at something a little bit different. I'm going to open up um, this design that came with digitizer of this African person and one, one of the challenges of doing a design like this as a split design so let's just imagine that you wanted to sew this design and you wanted to sew it in your macro hoop and your macro hoop is a split hoop which has two parts it has the red square and then it has the blue square and so Easily I can take and control A and I could move the African person up to the top and then I could um, click on one of the handles and drag and resize that design down to fill up my macro hoop. And everything seems great. But then when I go to save the design to Jeff, so I'll say file, save as, and we'll just save it to my, I have that training folder on my desktop and I'm going to save it as a Jeff file right there. And what's going to happen when I hit save? It says some objects in the design are not covered by hoops. Do you wish to continue? Well, I'm going to say no. What is happening is you see the African person is made up of objects. We've been talking about objects for this whole video and right now we're looking at the colors of this design. Why don't I open that up to the objects? So what has to happen for this to work is there needs to be each object needs to either be fully within the red square or within the blue square so somewhere within this design there's going to be an object that is in goes all the way from the red square down to the blue square and that's what the issue is now it's pretty easy for me to imagine because this design has run stitch outlines and oftentimes this is when this happens. So for example, with run stitch outlines around a car or around a person like this, the line goes all the way around the design from the beginning to the end and back. And that's what is usually the culprit. So let's just scroll down through this design and look for an object that appears that it may be large like that. And it's probably going to be a black object. So here's the black now. And if I keep scrolling through, we should find let's see oh down at the very end well there's the object right there I can see this object if I select that object and then move it off to the side you can see what I'm talking about see there's a single object that is in both the red hoop and the blue hoop that's the issue okay that's why this design will not easily save to your macro hoop now I'm gonna undo the move of that African ladies um, outline and what we're going to do now is we're going to use the combine mode has a feature called create splitting guide so first of all I'll turn combine mode on and here you can actually see when I turn the combine mode on the areas that are in the green hooping or the blue hooping now they've changed the colors but the two hoops um, the top hoop sews first the blue hoop sews second and you can see the areas that are black 
That's because there's an object that sews around and is not included in these hoopings. Now, the whole point of coming in here is I wanted to show you about this tool called the Create Splitting Guide. And when I turn that on, it actually gives me the ability to draw a line that says, look, if you can, split it here. So maybe we'll choose something like that as my splitting guide. I want to hit enter. Did you notice that all of those areas that were black around the design have now become colored in? So I believe that with that one splitting guide, I was able to solve all of the issues. So we'll turn combine mode off. We'll go file, save as, and we'll save it as a Jeff file. And we'll save it into my training folder and say save. And so it goes ahead and it shows me, it comes back to that same splitting guide. So it shows me that here's my hooping sequence. So this is everything that'll sew on the first hooping. Then this is everything that'll sew on the second hooping. And then this is everything that'll sew in the third hooping. And so it's covered all of the parts of the design by doing it that way. So that's called combine mode. And I showed it using uh, multi hoops for doing layouts. And I also showed it using um, a split hoop and using the new com or create splitting guide to be able to help to divide complex designs like this. So that's what I want to show you about using the combine mode toolbar.